Scholars of Swift, I'm Professor John Gallagher and welcome to a course update. So the constantly changing landscape of multiple technologies provided by multiple firms often presents a problem for software developers. One tech is updated by one firm and the change often breaks other things. This is the reality of practicing software professionals and this has recently flummoxed students in my zero to full stack Swift iOS course, which by the way is entirely free and online. Find all 100 plus videos at bit.ly slash prof g swift. But in this video, we'll walk you through a solution to get CocoaPods working on an M1 Mac and show you how to get Google Places working with Xcode. I've prepared a walkthrough document to accompany this video that you'll find at bit.ly slash CocoaPods M1 fix, all lowercase. And here are some other resources if you're new to my channel. If you find this useful, drop me a comment or post a tweet and tell others. So if you visit the URL for the doc I've prepared, you'll find a version of this file. Now you can scroll through it and follow all of these commands. Some students seem to still have problems because they still had residual CocoaPod files installed on their Macs. So the first part of this document describes how to completely delete any lingering versions of CocoaPods and associated files. Now I'm assuming you can open the terminal program on your Mac and follow these steps. So once you've got CocoaPods completely deleted, let's reinstall it. But first, make sure that you've quit your terminal program and we're going to make a copy of the terminal program but set it up so that it can install CocoaPods on M1 Max. And here's how. So find the terminal program that's in your Applications folder, then find the Utilities folder inside the Applications folder, and that's where the terminal program lives. And once you've found Terminal, duplicate it with the Command D shortcut. For some of these commands you'll be asked to enter your Mac's password, just do so when asked. A second version of Terminal will show up and it should be highlighted. Then press return on the duplicated file and this should allow you to rename the file. I'm gonna rename my duplicate file as Terminal-2 so that I know which one I've changed. Then you wanna get info on this application with the command I shortcut. Then in the Get Info box, you want to click on Open using Rosetta. Make sure that's clicked. Then you can close this window. And when you're ready to install CocoaPods, be sure to open this version of the terminal program. So use Terminal-2. And I'm going to increase the font so that you can see this a bit better. Then I'm going to go back to the installation document and I'm going to copy this command here. Or you could just type it straight in. sudo gem install CocoaPods. I'm going to paste that back into the terminal prompt. You'll be asked for your Mac's password. That's required for sudo commands. So make sure that you do that. That. And the first time that you run this, you'll see many more lines than I'm showing here. I had to reinstall this because my screen flow video record software crashed while I was recording this, but all the commands should work as shown, even though you've got more text on your screen. But when you're back at the prompt, you can return to our follow along document and copy this line here, sudo gem install FFI, return to the terminal, paste it in at the prompt. This will run for a while. On my M1 Mac, it took maybe a minute or less. And when you return to the prompt, you're ready to work with CocoaPods on your M1 Mac in your new copy of Terminal-2. Next, getting Google Places to work is pretty straightforward. The only thing that you need to be really aware of is that it won't run in the iOS simulator on your M1 Mac. You've got to run it on your iOS device, but when you do that, you'll still have full access to the debugger and it should run pretty quickly. So you just have to work on your executing device when executing your app and debugging your app instead of working on the simulator on your Mac screen. So at this point, if you have an M1 Mac, just remember to execute on a device that's plugged into your Mac when running Xcode instead of trying to execute in the simulator. Now I do show show one additional problem that I've seen. Sometimes students use adapters that aren't compatible with the standard USB cables. And I'll show the error that shows up with this in case you encounter it. And then I'll show you what things look like when you've got the equipment that's working right. But at this point, if you have an M1 Mac, you can stop watching this video and you can continue with the rest of the videos in the series. But I have built a test app in the video that follows just to completely show you that things do indeed work on an M1 Mac with code executing and being able to be debugged on an actual device not the simulator, so feel free to watch that portion if you think you need it. I'm going to create a sample app just to make sure that everything is working. So I've got my API key set up and there aren't any restrictions that will limit you with the app that you're using. Again, I'm assuming you've gone through all the steps to set up your API, your API key, connect it to your project, set up your credentials, and you put your credit card information into the Google Cloud account. Now I'm going to follow the steps in the textbook that I have accompanying my video series, but you can just enter the commands directly if you'd like. And rather than creating the WeatherGift app, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I can do this from scratch just to prove that everything can work. So I'm 
going to launch Xcode. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this Google Places Demo. Feel free to continue to use your Weathergift project if you want. I'm going to create this on my desktop and then quit. It's important to quit Xcode. And then in the terminal command, I am going to change directories to the project folder containing the project that I want to work with. In my case, it's the one that I just created. So I'm going to type in CD and space at the prompt. Don't press return yet. Then I'm going to return to the finder and I'm going to find the first folder named Google Places Dash Demo. You can find the first folder that contains whatever the name is of the project that you're working on. Maybe it's Weather Gift. And then I'm going to drag this folder into the terminal. And what this does is it adds the path to the folder so that I can go ahead and press return. And what I've done is I've entered the CD or change directory command and that changes the directory to the folder where I want to create my Cocoa Pods file and install my pods. Then I'm going to create my pod file in this project folder and I do that by typing in pod space init at the prompt and press return. After a moment, you'll be returned to the prompt. That should mean that your file's been created. And if I return to the finder, we should see that I've created a pod file inside of my projects folder. And so now I'm going to drag the pod file into Xcode and open it up. Then I'm going to delete everything between the target line and the end line, and I'm going to copy this text from my book and paste it in. You can type it in directly if you'd like. Be careful when copy and pasting from Apple Books, PDFs, or any other resources. Sometimes other resources introduce invisible characters or curly quotes instead of straight quotes, or sometimes some extra text that you don't want, but I'm okay here. The text that you enter should read pod, space, single quote, Google places an upper camel case, close with a single quote. Then I'm going to save this with Command S. I'm going to quit Xcode, very important, then return to Terminal, and at this prompt I'm going to type in pod, space, install, and press return. And after a moment, your CocoaPod should be installed. The yellow warning text just says that I didn't specify a version, so it set the iOS to 15, which is the latest version when I'm recording this. I'm assuming that your Macs are all upgraded to the latest operating system and your phones are too, so this should work for you. If not, time to upgrade. Then when you return to the Finder, remember every time you work with CocoaPods, now you want to open your projects via the file that ends in XC Workspace. Very important, so not Xcode Proj as we were using previously. XC Workspace has the correct pointers to your CocoaPods. That's the file you want to use, so I'm going to open my Workspace file now. Then inside the first folder layer, I'm going to find and click on App Delegate. Or actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an API Swift file to hold my API key. So I'm going to right click on viewcontroller.swift. I'm going to select new file. This is going to be a new Swift file. API keys with API and K all in capitals dot Swift. Create. Then I'm going to return to my book and I'm going to highlight and copy the API Swift keys file that's right here. Paste it in and I'm going to delete this extra text. And I've got to correct the curly quotes that are in here. You'll also see that Xcode is going to warn about invisible non-breaking spaces. So just if you see those, back over them and then retype carriage returns or spaces or whatever you need to to get rid of those. And I'm going to delete this text in the middle that says your API key here because that's where I've got to paste in my real API key. So again, on the Google console, assuming that you set up your API key properly, you can just find the API key, click on the copy icon, then return to Xcode and paste it in between the double quotes. Then open up the appdelegate.swift file, and I'm going to check with a reference text just to make sure that I've got everything down here. And I see I need this GMS Places client line, so I'm going to copy this. I also need to import Google Places. So once I've got that, I'm going to return to Xcode. Again, make sure you're in your app delegate file. And under Import UI Kit, I'm going to put Import Google Places. Then in this very first function, I'm just going to delete the comment that I have in here. And I'm going to paste in the GMS Places line that I've just copied. And note that it's referring to API keys, Google Places key. That's what we just created inside of the API keys file. So this way, you don't have to show your API key to everybody else. If you've gone through the video tutorial, you've also seen how you can hide this file on GitHub so that you're not sharing your API key on GitHub. Then I'll fast forward this part. I'm just creating a simple app in here to be able to test the Google Places autocomplete. So I'm just going to add a single button to a view controller. I'll put the text autocomplete on that. Then I'll show my view controller and main side by side in assistant editor mode. I'm going to control drag over from the button so that I can create an IB action when I click on this button and I'm going to call that autocomplete pressed. Then I'm going to return to the Google Documents that are in the Google Maps platform for iOS for Swift. So you can search for this online. It's also shown in the video. And I'm going to go into the area for Google Places Autocomplete, again, for Swift and iOS. And Google has a lot of extra stuff that's in here. We actually don't need all of the lines that are shown on this page. We do need to return to our view controller file and import Google Places here. That's an upper camel case. 
then back in the document, and again, these are the same steps that you'd find in the weather gift video, I'm going to find this line inside of the autocomplete clicked function that Google has. I don't have that function. I'm just going to paste this into our IB action that we created. And I'm going to copy these first two lines here, the let autocomplete controller and the autocomplete controller dot delegate equals self, return to Xcode, paste them into that IB action we just created. Then the only other line that we need is this present autocomplete controller. So I'm going to copy that, return to Xcode, and I'm going to paste that in as the last line in my IB action. Then I'm going to set up the view controllers extension the same way that Google has it on their page. So down below, I'm going to say extension view controller colon. I'm going to return to the web page here. I'm going to highlight everything after the colon. So that's from this GMS all the way to the close curly. Copy that, paste that back into my code. Xcode will show you two warning lines for these last two functions. Google, for some reason, is still distributing deprecated code. So I'm going to highlight these last two functions that are being identified by Xcode as being deprecated. I'm going to delete them. Those are gone. Don't worry about the additional warnings that you'll see up here for the print statements. We're not going to worry about those. We're just demonstrating to make sure that Google Place Autocomplete will pop up and work in our app. So here's what happens if you start to run Google Place Autocomplete on the simulator. You can see that I'm selecting iOS 13 Pro here. And you can see when I build and run, I get this error down here. The end of the line refers to something about the ARM64 architecture. Now ARM64 is the core used in Apple's new M1 chip, so it's not the Intel chip. So this is a signal that, hey, we're not gonna be able to run this on the simulator in this current version of Xcode. Google needs to update their code, but we can run it on our own iOS device. One caveat though, if you plug in your iOS device, then you select that device name from under the scheme, then go up under Windows and select Devices and Simulators, and you see that you're getting a warning in here that says, unable to prepare for whatever your device names is. The issue that you probably are having here is that you might not be using an adapter or a cable that's gonna be compatible with Xcode to be able to send data to your device. Currently, when I'm getting this warning here, I'm using a standard cable with a USB adapter, but the USB adapter is quirky, and for some reason, it's not properly connecting to my device. So, so what you're not seeing is I'm swapping this out to use an official Apple adapter. And when I do that, I can see that I no longer get the warning. I can build and run. Here is the code executing on my device. And when I click on my autocomplete button, I guess I didn't size that properly. I can go up here and I can type in the name of my favorite restaurant, Spice. I brought my students there last night. It's in Harvard Square. There are robots that prepare your food. It's really awesome. But what's even more awesome is we've got everything working. What you're seeing here is the code executing on my iOS device, my personal iPhone. So in fact, we can get CocoaPods working with Google Place Autocomplete. We've just got to go through the steps that we set up earlier, and we've got to run this on our device. Hope this helped you out. Good luck with everything, and keep at it.